Now 301, May 16, 2017. And I call to order the adjourned meeting of the City Council of the City of Victorville. And the City Council sitting is the Library Board of Trustees, Southern California Logistics Rail Authority, Southern California Logistics Airport Authority, successor agency to the Victorville uh, Redevelopment Agency, the Victorville Joint Powers Financing Authority, the Victorville Water District, and the city is housing assets of successor. May we have roll call, please? Councilmember Gomez. Good evening. Councilmember Kennedy is absent from tonight's meeting. Councilmember Negretti. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Cox. Here. Mayor Garcia. Here. At this time, we will have the Pledge of Allegiance, and we will be led by our Council Member Eric Negretti. Please stand. Thank you. Please put your hand over your heart. And begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have one item on our agenda this evening, and uh, this is pre-budget workshop establishing the annual budget for fiscal year 2017-2018. Madam Clerk, read the recommendation. Uh, there is no recommendation at this time, Mayor Garcia. There you go. This is um, at the uh, discretion of the City Council. And I turn it over to our mayor. Uh, <laughs> I'm always saying the mayor, our city manager. Thank you, Mayor Garcia. Um, so we left off two weeks ago uh, towards the tail end of the public works department, I think, or maybe we finished it, or perhaps there may have been questions. I don't recall exactly. Um, but uh, just to give you a little bit of an update, uh, as we mentioned, we continue to work on uh, the budget to bring the council a little bit uh, of flexibility um, for the June 6th meeting. Uh, we anticipate uh, having uh, some revenue surpluses uh, that uh, the council will be able to discuss and direct the funding uh, thereof, whether that's to uh, police, uh, perhaps fire truck, or some capital projects or to reserves or some combination of all three or four of those things. So I uh, will continue to work on the budget uh, and look forward to your input uh, today and uh, of course on June 6th as well. So, uh, John, correct me, where exactly did we leave off? We did leave off um, Mr. Matthews. We're on public works and I think we were going to start on the public works page and talk with engineering. Okay. So got enough page today. Mm -hmm. Well, come on down. A slightly different setup. You guys are a little more comfortable, I guess, huh? <coughs> I'll sit down since that's the way it's set up. Um, I'll try to keep this brief and feel free to ask questions at any time. Uh, as you know, engineering is a division of the public works department, so I'd like to give a brief overview and uh, do some highlights of the CIP. Uh, I'm not going to cover the water CIP. That's going to be under water, technologies, and some of that. And so uh, I'm going to start off first with uh, engineering has 40 positions. 11 of those are in traffic maintenance. There are six major functions of engineering. These aren't necessarily in the order of importance, but uh, number one, we manage uh, most of the capital improvement program, not all of it. Uh, so that includes uh, the design, inspection, and construction management of the capital improvement program. Number two, we are responsible for development review of infrastructure, the construction of the public right away. Uh, that includes uh, reviewing for planning commission, effort with planning on the condition of approval, and the plan of map review and also uh, issuing permits for inspection and acceptance for private development. Number three, uh, that also kind of dovetails into the permitting function. We permit all the 
activity, construction activity in the public right away. That could be a utility company. It could be uh, private development. Uh, number four, uh, craft engineering, responsible for craft engineering, which includes uh, signals, striping, signing. Uh, number five, we uh, we provide in house insurance for uh, public works operation and maintenance and uh, for the airport. Uh, we also, uh, number six, provide survey, which is uh, that includes reviewing maps and also construction statements. So, most of the basic functions for engineering. Um, in the budget this year, there's nothing uh, dramatic in the personnel. Our only change is one final change from an engineering specialist to an administrative analyst. That's pretty minor. If I could direct you to the uh, public works tab. Uh, Before you get there, I have a couple of questions on the engineering. Okay. If I might. Yes, go ahead. Um, we, uh, the city of Victorville established a street lighting assessment district some two and a half years ago. And uh, so everyone, I guess, that has property here, pays taxes, pays into that. And I noted that you're going to be using, or have been using, those funds for signals. And I suppose that's OK. I haven't gone back and looked at the resolution. But I also noticed that development fees are all, for new developers also got to pay development fees. Is that correct? There's a, there is a, it's very small. There's an old street light development impact plan. There's a very low fee and there's very little in the front office. But it's, it's separate from the assessment. Who handles the undergrounding of utilities? Is that your department? Um, well, if they're dry utilities, typically uh, the utility companies, Edison or uh, Charter. The reason that I ask, on Humbell Road, there's a new used auto parts store that went in, a new auto parts store that went in. It's across the street from an auto parts place. And the underground utility is right in front of that building. But next door, which is a fairly new building, it's not old. Utilities are overhead, and then next door at the shopping center, they're underground again. Oh, I see. Uh, so, in relation to private development, yes, that's a that's a planning process. Engineering works with planning, but that those projects are okay. Uh, they go through the uh, planning review with the planning commission. Okay, so I'll, I'll I'll sometimes underground it can be deferred. Uh, Chris Porter might be able to answer that better than I could, but there's there's actually a policy. Uh, in place for undergrounding, but uh, there is the authority also to confer the underground to a later time. Well, it does need to be answered now, but I noticed that there was the Edison trucks, five of them, a huge crew. I counted 12 people, and there was more there, and they ended up undergrounding under the brand new, but next door they didn't. I don't know why they couldn't plan this. Should have been underground. If it was deferred, now it's time to do it. So yeah. now it's underground, not underground, underground. Somebody needs to look into it. That's all. I don't have an answer on that particular bill. Okay. Thank you. I have a question, too. Yes. Yeah, it's really hard to hear. I don't know if you guys in the back can hear, but I'm having a very, very difficult time. I don't know if we can raise our voices a little louder, maybe use a microphone. I'm hearing, I don't know, but okay. if someone could you can speak a little louder, I would appreciate that. Um, my question, Tom, then, so you were talking about the position from an engineer title to an administrative analyst. Is that a demotion of a person, or is that no, a... No, it's, it's a slight increase in compensation. Uh, it's actually a, an upgrade, but it's not a very dramatic uh, upgrade. Thank you. Uh, well, any, any other questions? Uh, if I could direct your attention to the uh, Public Works Department Summary, uh, it's on the second page, and uh, at the top of the page it says Engineering Summary, you can find that. I don't know if everybody's there. It has a budget change percentage, and on the top uh, it says Personnel. 9%, and that is uh, 
due to a combination of factors, it's due to the COLA increase and step increases. So it's, it's not a huge increase. It's not really, it's not due to an increase in the number of positions. If you'll notice uh, the operation and maintenance change, that's a, that is a big change. It's minus 48%. And, and the reason for that is because this is a roll-up. You don't see the detail, but uh, this varies year to year. And it includes projects. There are projects in that number. And some of the projects aren't technically capital projects. It could be a slurry sale project, which is more of a maintenance project. And that's why you see that number vary so much from year to year. So uh, it's not, strictly speaking, it's not purely operations and maintenance, at least the way I, I would define it. But I don't know if anyone has any questions about that, but that's the reason for that uh, change. And then the other change is, uh, it says other charges. And that varies a fair amount too, uh, because it has a variety of uh, expenses in it. And uh, the last year, the reason it changed was uh, there's a traffic safety expense that was not included in it, and this year it is. So that's an explanation of the changes. I don't know if anyone has any questions about that. Brian, how about the capital line item? The, the capital line item, uh, again, that, that varies uh, from year to year, depending on the sum of what's in the capital, capital program. And I would like to go into the highlights of the CIP, at least my part of it, if you're ready. Otherwise, I'll answer any questions you may have. Well, I have a comment, another one. Um, I noticed that there's at least two members of the public here. I don't know if there's any more. But for future reference, if we have a slide up here that they can probably have, I'm sure that's available. I would like to start including the, the public. Thank you. If you're ready, I can go into the CIP highlights. I'll keep this brief. I'm just going to touch on a few highlights. Clear. Uh, I, you don't have any document before you, so okay. you'll just have to listen. I don't have a handout. Um, I didn't really intend on passing out a handout, but I'm certainly available for questions. And the CI, there is a CIP uh, tab that has the projects in it, but I wasn't planning on going through every one of them. I really didn't want to uh, take up that much time. However, if you want to focus on a particular project, I'd be happy to. Well, the, the, the question, we have a tab for capital project types, or I guess capital improvement. And then street, sewer, traffic signal, is that where you're going from? Well, yes, is but I'm, I'm not actually going to turn to that tab, and I'm not going okay. to go through every project. Because I, I didn't want to devote that much time to this. Unless one wants to focus in on a certain area, that's, that's fine. But I, I did want to uh, get a few highlights. First, I'll start the streets. Uh, Luna Road will be starting probably mid to late August. That's a county project. It's a cooperative project with the city, so we're contributing funds. That's from Amethyst to Amethyst. That's about a $1.3 million project. And then uh, one change that we're making in the priority list of streets is we're requesting to ship Village Drive into this coming fiscal year. Uh, it was going to be a, a couple years out, but uh, the maintenance activity has had to increase on the road, and uh, so uh, there's been some thought put into shifting it in front of Silica and Industrial Road, and so that's, that's a proposed change in the budget. And then Silica and Industrial would fall the next year, and then the year after that, Mojave Drive. So that's a, ch a major change in the street. Part of we're continuing to have an annual slurry sill program with about a million dollars a year. Uh, right now we're doing the Green Tree East area. And this coming year we're planning on doing the Square Mile area. That's between the Squally and Bear Valley and 7th and Balsam. That's our target area for next year. And then uh, on the signal projects, uh, we're planning on constructing a new signal at Mojave and Amethyst. Uh, you already know about that because we went to City Council recently. And we have a grant funded project to install a new signal with that Mojave and East Trail. And then we also have a Safe Rap School project with two more signals that are four way stops 
uh, on Mesa Linda, first one at Mesa Linda, uh, La Mesa, and there's another one at Mesa Linda and Luda. Uh, there's also another signal project at the plant at US 395 in La Mesa, so that would connect La Mesa to Highway 395. And then this, I'm now going to move into sewer. Uh, for our sewer <coughs> uh, Ryan, before you jump uh, away from streets, can you give just a, I know the project just started, but just an update on the major project we're doing now on Amethyst and La Mesa Road. Okay. Well, La Mesa doesn't go through to 395. It, it will, but part of the project with the As signal. Part of the signal project? Yes, yes, to connect it. Okay. Yeah, it's the same project, right? Yeah, uh, I recall recently you were a contract, about $10 million contract. It's for La Mesa to rehabilitate the pavement on all of La Mesa from where we left off with the interchange project, basically from El Rio all the way to Cantina to the west end. That's under construction now. And part of the same project is Amethyst from Bear Valley Road to Mojave. It's all, all under construction. There are multiple crews working. It's about a three month project. And along with that, uh, we will be restriping and installing bike lanes on both roads. There's also some underground work. We wanted to make sure we took care of some sewer, minor sewer work and uh, water lateral work before we repaved the road. It's mainly a repaved project. And one thing that we did was we made sure that that road, those roads will be completed before the, the Luna Road project so that folks who live in that area aren't having to deal with both major thoroughfares east-west being closed at the same time. That, that's right. And, and just another FYI, Caltrans already has planned out an overlay project on Palmdale Road. And they're going to be overlaying Palmdale Road from I-15 to US 395. And we don't have an exact start date on that, but they're estimating it may start somewhere around late August. It could be a little bit later. But that would be just as we're finishing up our one day sample. You said two lanes are going to be added, uh, but that very valley road to Mojave, two bike lanes? We're going to have uh, bike lanes on both sides, uh, on the outer part of the road next to the gutter. So, yes, there will be a bike lane in each direction on both roads. It'll be just striking on the pavement. Uh, I'm ready to move on to sewer. Ready. Uh, for sewer, we have about two million dollars of main line replacements. I'm sorry, how much? Main main replacements. No, how much? About two million. Okay, thank you. And those were identified at uh, our master plan that we recently completed, and that's going to be an ongoing program every year. We're going to be needs to replace our mains, either a line or replace our mains. And uh, so that's various locations. And uh, those are the CIP highlights. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to ask. I have one question on that. Yeah. The sewer, aren't they uh, setting a camera through the sewer lines in the downtown area? They are. Actually, we have a contract to video our entire sewer system. And so from that, the outcome will be is we have a condition rating of all of our sewer lines. And an engineering company will give us a recommendation if we need to rehabilitate whether line or replace. And from that, we'll have an annual program of either lining or replacing sewer lines. For, for a long time, we've had business people downtown and residents complain of sewer odors that come and go. Is this intended to find the cause of that, or do we know the cause, or can it be corrected? Um, recently attended a, a ribbon cutting of a new business downtown, and it was overwhelming, and then it went away. So there's some problem someplace. Yeah, if, if there's a problem there, the camera should pick it up. You know, if there's a cracked line or something like that that might be letting some gases escape, the camera should pick it up. Um, if not, um, we'll have to look to our friends at BBWRA because they've got some lines in that area as well. You know, to find out if, if they could potentially be the source. That's what we can look at. Sometimes there's turbulence cause, and there's turbulence that can cause the odors to come up. Okay. Just 
I know there's been complaints now for what, four or five years? It's been a long time. Apparently we can't find it or it's not us. I don't know. But since they're doing those cameras, you might want to plan on having some sort of replacement or repair just in case because it's an ongoing problem. And a lot of people are unhappy about that. I suspect given the age of those lines in Old Town, uh, that they likely will find some sort of a problem in that area. Whether that solves the order or not, we don't yet know. I, I would be surprised if we didn't find some sort of uh, uh, pipe. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Problem. I have another question. There, from the Mojave River or the Mojave Waffle, they give us appropriate task now. Uh, Mrs. Clapp donated $48,000 uh, for Benton, Apple Valley, and Victorville. And she asked me where Victorville is worth, so I'm wondering to give her back a response. So if anybody can let me know so I can let her know where the expenses are. I'm sure she'd be glad to hear a response and we'd be happy to probably can travel there and see them. Yeah, we haven't paved our section yet. Um, we are in that process now. Brian can give us a little update on that. Uh, that's a grant funded project about $3 million or so. Yeah, I will, yeah well, we're very blessed and we appreciate that. And we are going to purchase those benches as part of the project. It's a federal funded project. It's an active transportation program fund. And uh, we are approaching 100% plans and if we can get through all the uh, Caltrans process that can be kind of lengthy getting the authorization down to ICE. We're hoping to have it ICE this fall. So we can start late in 2017 and um, so then after that time we can you know we can order the benches as part of the project. We want to make sure the federal grant pays for it so we're going to incorporate it with the project. Any more questions? Is that all for you, Brian? That's all I have. All right. Doug Matthews, Thank you. I think you're up next. We're going to go backwards a little bit in the book, right? Oh, it's on the same page. Oh, same page, okay. Yes. Good afternoon. So I'm going to go so I'm going to cover on that same Public Works Department summary page, the Public Works Summary, the second one, and the Water Summary. Uh, starting with the Public Works Summary, if you look at the bottom, and you've got funding sources down there. That will show you where we pull our money from. from. It's uh, very minimal in the general fund. The general fund is just uh, complete and graffiti. Everything else is funded out of other sources. The division we fund out of this would be a uh, fleet. Oh, excuse me, I don't yeah. know where you're at. So, uh, public work summary is. Yeah, let's oh. see. go back to public work right engineering. There's public work summary. And then it's public work summary. Oh, okay. Then there's municipal utilities and there's water. Okay. Right there. Thank you. So you'll see funding source at the bottom of the chart for public work summary. That gives you an indication of where our sources are coming from with the expenses showing above. The divisions we cover out of here are our fleet, our uh, fuel pumps, graffiti, our CNG stations, sanitary sewer operations, BBWRA funding for, for pass-through costs, uh, asphalt maintenance, weeds, shoulder maintenance, street sweeping, open space, concrete, uh, we fund standby out of here, we take care of an Amtrak station, we do bus shelter maintenance, uh, and we take care of 4 million square foot of landscaping in the LMADs and, and DFADs and MADs, the most drainage areas, and those. those are our assessment districts. The operation and maintenance on the public works is, is up 26%. Yeah, uh, we'll get to that, we'll start, I was going to run line by line for you. Okay. So starting with personnel, the 9%. We do have four new positions slated for this year. Two of them are equipment operators, and that's in our asphalt concrete division. Uh, we're we're trying to do crack sealing year round. It's just a, it's something we're not being able to keep up with because the roads are deteriorating so quickly that we need to put more effort to it. Uh, that will and currently that that uh, group does not have any equipment operators, so that will essentially get us more crack sealing crews out there. The other two positions are in the LMATs. Uh, they're just maintenance workers, and currently we only have one full-time person funded in there on the maintenance side for all four million square foot. We do use a contract service. 
but this will add two additional guys under him. He's a lead worker currently, and this will give them him the opportunity to spread them out amongst the help ads, watch over the contractor, help with some of the repairs and whatnot. Question? Yes. The LMATs are, they have several of their assessments, and some were increased and some can't be. Correct. The LMATs supply sufficient revenue to pay so that it doesn't require any additional funding from the general fund? Yes, the, the only one we supplement partially would be LMAT 4, and that's the downtown area. And the funds we collect there, and there, there's no uh, uh, cost inflator in there, but the funds we collect there are just enough to cover electricity and water. So we do send staff down there to trim and we do whatnot. We are going to take care of them, but uh, there's some we have to look at. I think there's only, I'm guessing, 26 or something people in there that fund it, businesses. So it's something we're, we're looking at down the road to see if we can do to increase it and, and figure out you know, how to make that more viable. But for the rest of them, yes, for now, uh, one, one through four do not have escalators. One through three are the ones that uh, mm -hmm. you know we have the biggest problem with. We're not cutting back services yet, but down the road, as, as the water continues to increase, and like Chris and whatnot, it's a you know, uh, minimum wage. It, it will be a problem down the road. We'll have to figure out what we can do. We did go out to a vote on two and three and one, but uh, of course, it didn't make uh, on the operations and maintenance side, 26% increase, that's about $3.4 million. Uh, $3 million of that is from the sewer. That includes $2.2 million for the CCTV that's running cameras down for next fiscal year. It also includes about a $600,000 increase for BBWA charges, uh, $40,000 legal, $30,000 infrastructure repair. If you pull out that three million, that takes us down to the four hundred sixty-six thousand. Of that, we have two hundred thousand ET water clocks that we're putting in the LMADs, and, and part of that is grant funded. We have some uh, bus stop shelter access projects for seventy thousand in there, and we're increasing our contract services in LMAD six by about one hundred fifty thousand. So, if you pull those out of there, the three million of those projects, that increases about 03 percent. So, on the ONM side, it's not. The actual operations maintenance are really not increasing that. Uh, it's mostly contract service type and pass through cost in there. Going down to the other charges, the 10%, that's basically cost allocation that we're, we're getting increased this year through the new study. And on the capital side, the 23% uh, decrease, we had a lot of equipment we didn't have it to buy. You, you approved quite a bit of backhoes. And, uh, uh, graders and whatnot this year, street sweepers, and, and so while we still have some for next year, we, we have to stay in compliance. We, we have a schedule to, I believe, 2020, so, but this year was probably the worst year, and it'll lessen a little bit here and there until we, we get out to 2020 and become fully compliant <coughs> until they change the rules again. But that's why you see a decrease there. The capital side under public works is basically equipment and vehicles. Brian covered the capital projects under his. Any questions on the public works side? Okay, we'll flip over on the next page on the water summary. We'll start again with uh, personnel and, and uh, there's only one new position in the water side and that's a uh, senior maintenance lead worker under water supply and water quality. Most of the divisions in public works, almost all of them, have uh, basically an assistant supervisor under the supervisor to handle some of the tasks in the field and when the supervisor's out, it's the second in command and this is the only one that does it. We're, we're filling that this year and putting that position in there to have that second in charge. Uh, so that will be a slight increase there. Just like the other budgets, though, we, we, we do have full increase, rent, merit, um, different increases like that. And that's what constitutes the personnel cost changes. Uh, there is one reclassification in there from a, a uh, supply operator to an electrician. We just need more help on our SCADA side with uh, all the electrical and, and SCADA equipment out there. They need another body, and we don't need it as much as productive services. So we're not adding it, we're just reclassifying the position. Do you happen to have an electrician on, in, employed that's in a totally different position? Well, we actually, at this city, we have a, a SCADA 
believe is a coordinator position. We have an electrical person under him. There's an electrician at the airport, and there's a bunch of electrical employees under Bemis. So they kind of separate. Those guys over there are high voltage at the airport in Bemis, and these guys are more on the low voltage side with, with skate operations and whatnot. There's enough on the water side between all the wells and uh, the skater that you, know, you, you just need to help. Um, o and M side, you're only seeing about a, a four percent increase, and a hundred thousand of that is legal, um, and some utility increases there. Our production costs, they're actually going down, uh, and the reason for that is our replacement makeup obligation to BBWA is based on the prior year, and with the water reductions, our, our makeup obligation and replacement is quite a bit less this year to pay for last year. That's quite a bit. Yes, it yeah, it's good. You mean MWA, right? Oh, what did I say? You said DBWA. Uh, you know what? We're not going to replace yeah. any water with that. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's too wrong, Mike. Yes. When you see about water, is it with one with two or one with three water, potable water? Good question. It's all of them. So it's it's with one, with two. It's our reclaim and it's our industrial wastewater treatment plant. So so this water uh, summary includes all those. And again, you can see the funding sources on the bottom. to kind of indicate that reclaim and uh, wastewater treatment are all in there. They're all rolled together. Other charges. Um, one of the reasons that's going down is just that there were some expenses transferred out of there. So uh, that doesn't mean our uh, cost allocation is going down. We just had some OPEB costs coming out and we retired the COP obligation. So that's why there's a net de decrease instead of a, uh, an increase there. Another question? Yes. I did have, I did, you know, we, we have 2015, 3,300, 2017, 3,100, fiscal year 2018, 1900. But the actual 68 million, well, yeah. some so, explanation, please. So those were fund transfers. So where you see it on the expense side is going on the revenue side somewhere else between the funds of, uh, and because this covers all funds, 410, 11, 12, and 13. So that was just asset transfers going from one to the other. So it's all internal, and it's just, it's, it's not really indicative of what happened. It's just a, it's a. Paper transfer. I'd like to see sometime what it is. Yeah. Not today, not, but I'm just curious. We need to break down that one. Yeah, it, it was wastewater treatment plant involved in between the that asset and, and so. Well, uh, it, it's shown as a charge as part of the total. Operations. It, it I don't know if it's a depreciation or if it's a fund transfer. Asset transfer. Oh, an asset transfer. Right, an expense. So the, yeah, I really the money transferred out and the asset transfers. Okay. We can get that for you. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so heading down to capital is, is the last item on there. Uh, just to let you know, our, our capital is uh, tracking very well with our, our race study. Uh, engineering has done a good job of getting projects out. You've seen a lot come through, you know, through you for approval to get built. Um, most of these include our, our small diameter steel main replacements, our plastic service line replacement program. Uh, we have a booster station from WIC 1 to WIC 2 that's going to be built this coming year. We have a turnout to the uh, uh, RQ pipeline that's going to benefit us quite a bit. Uh, we have a large meter replacement program to put ultrasonic meters in there. So the bulk of it has been pipeline. And uh, as you recall from the rank study, if, if we had no capital, we wouldn't need a rate increase. Uh, our O&M would be, be OK. But because of the capital, we needed a rate increase. <coughs> This year, just to remind you, there's a 6.5% rate increase going into effect on July 1, and that's going to cover these capital projects. We will still be spending down our cash, um, and, and this tracks it through a five-year period to where, at the end of those five years, we're going to have the, the uh, targeted amount of reserves left, and we will spend that cash down on, on the project slated. We also have projects in there that we would like to get to, but we couldn't in the rate study because we stopped at the 6.5% increase. So 
if the projects come in well, if, if revenues do well, if expenses stay down, we can do more of the projects and we'll be ready to. Uh, the increase you see, you, if you look at uh, the actual uh, 16 and, and uh, 6 million, we go up to 11 and then 14. Uh, we're a little short of the 11 this year, but it's, it's been in design and uh, uh, it's ready to go out, so it's just going to span two years. A lot of times, some of these large projects, design takes long enough that you just you can't get it done all in one year, so it is going to span a year. So if you plan for it one year, if you do get it built, you have the money, and if you don't, you roll it over to the next year. Uh, it's tracking very well. We probably have more capital in there than we planned on in the rate study, but that's a good problem. We'll build whatever we can afford, and we'll, we'll keep tracking as we go. So. Um, if you want to see the capital, it is on pages 53 to 82 in the back, but I wasn't going to go through 30 pages of the capital today. But uh, it is in there. If you have questions later, we'd be more than happy to answer them. Like I said before, most of them are the small diameter steel main replacements and the plastic service line replacements that we're targeting to get out. We have a master plan we're completing uh, and a few other things happening, but those are the highlights of it. I think I have a question for you, actually. Um, not 100% related to budget, but um, I stopped by my house meet the ranch at lunchtime. Got the pleasure of driving across the Mesa Road. Um, I was happy I was in my four wheel drive. Um, but uh, anyway, on my way back, I was trying to avoid that area and I went down Bear Valley. I noticed there was some work happening south of Bear Valley on Amethyst. Is that you guys doing something out there, or is that part of the engineering project? Because I thought that the the street reconstruction stopped at Red Valley. I can. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, part of this project, we're installing a fiber optic line that goes through the water tanks at Sycamore and Amethyst. Okay. It's for communications. Okay. All right. I just saw work going on and I thought it was odd because I didn't think it went that far. So that makes sense. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> uh, Mayor and Council, I get the short uh, straw of uh, presenting the Municipal Utility Budget, which is uh, lumped into the Public Works uh, tab. And I'll go ahead and start. Uh, what I'd like to do is kind of roll through exactly what's here in the Public Works Department section. Uh, so if you go to the Department tab, uh, Public Works. And then once I go through, uh, similar to uh, Mr. Matthews, I'm going to go through uh, line by line and uh, talk about the changes. But then I want to roll into the enterprise fund to kind of show you the financial, uh, a little bit more of the financial perspective of how the Victorville utility is doing. So if you're all there, under municipal utility summary, you'll notice uh, first that under the budget change, which is probably the easiest thing to try to track, figure out what's going on. Uh, in this particular case, they're all blank. Uh, but I'll read them to you because I think it was just uh, an error and omission because when you do track these on the um, enterprise fund, they're in fact there. So uh, the first one is personnel. Uh, that one, actually, you can write in 61% increase. And a large part of the reason for that change has been uh, a large uh, focus of mine over the last year, and that's restructuring uh, the department. Um, we do increase uh, full-time equivalents from 6.7 to approximately 10.2. Um, those numbers aren't exact uh, people. There are a lot of shared uh, human resources uh, participating in the uh, utility department. Um, that alone is about 53 percent. Uh, increase. So that contributes to the largest part of that 61% uh, change. The remaining 8% uh, has to do with um, just cost of living. Um, there's some uh, position uh, adjustments. Uh, that's pretty much it. On the uh, operations and maintenance, that actually goes down by 14%. These are everything uh, that goes into the gas and um, electric operations, contract services, consumables, transportation costs. Um, so that actually decreases, which is good. Production costs, those are going to be your actual uh, commodities. Um, the Victor B. Utility 
as you know, uh, is involved in the natural gas business and the electric business, both at Foxborough and at SCLA. So the cost of commodity is largely what you're going to find in the production component. You'll see a 6% increase there. Um, that's directly tied to uh, the cost of the commodity. I know offhand that in this upcoming fiscal year, um, electricity alone, uh, we do buy in bulk. Uh, we have a contract for about 93 million megawatt hours uh, for next fiscal year. That price does go up slightly over uh, the, the current year's price. Uh, other charges is blank. Uh, that's also a 3% uh, increase. Uh, the most notable one that I can find in there is probably cost allocation. Um, altogether, the total operating expenditures for Bemis, that number is an increase of 3%. Uh, capital, uh, in the order of $1.4 million, that goes down by 21%. And speaking to the funding sources that this rolled up budget pulls from, you'll find that at the very bottom. And that's um, uh, Bemis Electric. And Bemis Electric includes both electric at um, Foxborough and SCLA. Same for the gas. And then you have some public benefit funds uh, that also are used to uh, help the, uh, both utilities at both locations. And the Bemis Cap and Trade Fund is um, something that Bemis is eligible for. We actually roll that money directly into offsetting the electric rates and make the electric rates a little bit more affordable to the customer. If there, are any, if there aren't any questions from that, I'd like to go directly to the Enterprise Fund tab that deals with Bemis. And this probably gives you a little bit better perspective of what those expenditures mean um, in the sense of how they compare to revenues. I have a question for you. Okay. For the total operating expenditures, did you give us a figure to write in? Yes. Um, that number is going to be uh, operations and maintenance is minus 14%. The expenditure side? Yes. Or just operations and maintenance is minus 14%. Um, operations and maintenance is 14% if you're asking for total operating expenditures, is that one? Yes. 3% uh, increase. The total operating budget is basically zero difference, right? Um, it's actually going to be, we're cash, we're upside down a little bit, and that's, that'll be on the next. You know, I was just meaning on the summary page, there's a very bottom percentage missing to the total operating budget. Oh, right, I'm sorry, that is 0%, yes. Okay. Why so did you have us write it in versus everyone else had uh, something already in here? Yeah, I, you know, I think that's just a mistake in the printing. Uh, yeah, that was our error in our <coughs> report. We have fixed it. Sorry about that. But uh, that chart is, in fact, the same chart if you go to the Enterprise Fund. Um, and the very bottom chart, that actually has the numbers in them. So it was just an error in printing. Um, but combined, and what this uh, does is shows the victim of municipal utility funds 419, 420, 421, 422, 423, and 424. Those are the variety of funds that make up the department, um, all of which roll up to what you see here. And very generally speaking, the total revenues of the, depar of the department are 14,829,402. You'll find that uh, on the total revenue side. Um, You've got total expenses to the order of 15 million. No, I, where's that at? I don't see it. Did you go to the enterprise fund cap. I did. Yeah, you were there. Oh, okay. you were there. I just missed it. It's not. He's in the Four, five, six pages in. Oh, here. Apologies again for missing page numbers on these that would have been easier. We'll correct it for the next budget workshop. We have budget. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, summarizing revenues, you got 14829000 Expenses, you've got 15070000 It actually shows an imbalance, um, and that imbalance is uh, largely attributed to a capital project that's being uh, taken on on the natural gas side. 
um, and to make the difference in the balance work, effectively cash uh, out that department is being used to make up the difference. But it's probably easier if I talk through the various divisions within the BEMAs so that you can understand how their revenues and expenses work. And I'm actually going to share with you some numbers and information that's inside this chart that you're not seeing because this is just a roll up. Um, but speaking of natural gas, for uh, two seconds, natural gas is funds 419 and 423. Combined, uh, for, for, for those two funds, revenues were projecting at $2.67 million with an expense side of $3.6 million. That's an imbalance of $1 million, uh, 1.02. Uh, in fact, the natural gas uh, pipeline project that we're actually out for bid, expecting to award in June before you as a council, uh, that is exactly the difference. Uh, so uh, that's uh, going to be paid for relying on cash on hand. We've looked at a cash or we've done a cash balance study and determined that adequate cash is available in the natural gas account to pay for that capital expense. So the biggest part of your deficit is uh, from uh, capital on gas. Um, if we go to, while well, speaking just operatively about the natural gas, You've got a total of about 54 meters uh, out at SCLA. That's uh, projecting to sell over the next year about 2.4 million terms of natural gas to customers at both SCLA and Foxborough. Uh, going to electric, we pulled that out as well. Electric represents funds 420 and 421. Revenue on electric is 12 million, uh, 18,000 is what we project. Uh, expenses are 11 million, 140,000, uh, so that's cash positive to the order of about $900,000 and that's how you make up that big difference to actually show the rolled up amount being so small uh, being upside down. Um, on the electric side that's 63 meters. Uh, we've got a peak demand of 16.9 uh, megawatts of uh, power and we're on, on contract again to purchase uh, another 93 million megawatts. Uh, we're projecting both on the natural gas side and on the electric side uh, for sales to be flat. Uh, the capital that's included on electric, there's not a lot. Uh, we have um, uh, some gas switch replacements uh, that we're going to actually undertake, a safety project uh, that we'd like to take on to help make it uh, easier for uh, or safer for our crew when working in vaults. One other thing that we, are, we do plan on uh, taking on this year and it's a large part of uh, why we had actually uh, realigned a lot of staff um, with Venus. Um, one thing that uh, I believe uh, we can do is grow the utility with the right resources. Uh, but another thing that we need to do um, is come up with a good master plan that really defines uh, how the Venus uh, electric system is going to grow, what capital improvements are going to be needed, and of course, once we understand what the master plan for that system looks like, then we can make sure that the rate structure we have is adequate to, to in fact, uh, capture funds necessary to achieve that uh, system goal. So with that, that's high level view of uh, Venus. I'll uh, remain available for any questions or comments you have. I have a question. So Venus electricity and gas overlap in funds 419 and 421 only? Um, natural gas is 419 and 423. Electric. So it's not 419 through 423. Correct. It's 419 and 423. Electric would be 420, 421, and 424. Thank you. Last but best, I'll say, is uh, economic development. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie Smith, you're going to cover economic development and pinch hit for Eric on airport, right? Yes, I will. Good afternoon, And I say best only because this is the good news department. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll start with economic development, small budget. 
um, and then we'll delve into SPLA as a larger budget. We will be working off of the economic development tab on the budget book. I'll just start really briefly with an overview of the major functions of economic development. Um, our primary responsibility is marketing and business attraction, business development for the city. Um, other functions involve the wind down of our former RDA, the successor agency. We still pay off debt of the uh, former RDA. And we also serve as the housing successor agency, the role that the city took over when the RDA was dissolved. And in that regard, we deal with compliance for all of our affordable housing projects. We deal with the housing assets that were <coughs> inherited from the RDA. We manage the loans receivable, those types of things. Um, economic development is not funded uh, by the general fund. Its funding sources are the successor agency, or the airport, which we heavily market, the enterprises such as uh, Bemos, and, and even there's some funding from water, in that we're trying to attract businesses that will come in and use all of these city enterprises. For, for 17 18, um, the budget for economic development is about $4 million. That primarily includes debt service of the former RDA, but it also includes portions of um, staffing costs and just general operating costs. Uh, that's reflected on the, the first line there, on the first tab that we're looking at, I'm sorry, the second line, $4 million. As you can see, it's basically the same as last year because sort of in wind down mode as far as the RDA and the expenditures pretty much remain the same and our marketing budget for the year uh, remains consistent. The department has uh, been planned for 17, 18, seven full-time equivalent positions. Uh, I'm sorry, how many? Seven. So that's, that's a pretty basic, straightforward um, um, department. Um, so if you have any questions on that, I'll answer those before we move into airport, which is a little bit more extensive. I have a question. Okay. So on today's agenda, we have two RDA items. I know one of them is going to be sold, I don't know if the other one is also oh. on sale. Both. Okay. Yeah. So um, will that still liquidate any of the outstanding debts? So in a roundabout way, it will. When Former RDA properties are sold. The sales proceeds are used um, to pay off any old debt of the RDA. And then if there are funds uh, remaining above the annual debt services amount, they get distributed to the county. And then the county actually distributes those funds to the taxing agency. Okay. Any other economic development questions? Okay, so we'll move on to airport. Mm -hmm. Airport is also reflected, um, I think a better summary is on the back page, the back of the page we're just looking at, bottom section, airport division. You'll see that overall the airport budget is about $32 million for 2017-18. That number represents the four major funds that comprise SDLA. It's what we call the airport operations account, the off-airport account, off-airport operations account, and then lastly, the debt service account. And so I'll cover them separately because they really are different type of funds that are bundled together and, and comprise the 32 million. If you go to the enterprise tab, three pages in, You'll see Southern California Logistics Airport Fund 450, 452, and 455. If you flip over to the back of that page, you'll see what I was just mentioning. You'll see broken up separately funds 450, 452, and 455. So we'll talk about airport operations first. That is where you will see um, about 8.4 million. Uh, in expenditures and about $8.36 uh, for budgeted revenues for the year. 
uh, airport revenues come from things like airport, I'm sorry, building and ground leases, uh, fuel sales, landing fees that are charged for the airport. Um, that's the basic revenues that go into the airport funds revenue. Basic expenditures would be all the staffing, the cost of maintaining the buildings, the cost of providing um, tower services, um, ARF or firefighting services, all of those types of things are in the expenditure line item. Uh, we work from, because we do not rely on the general fund work, we start by um, uh, projecting revenues and then make sure that our expenditures are in line with what we plan to generate for that year. So they're pretty balanced as you can see there. The next fund is the off-airport operations. It's very small. It's for those properties that are not within the actual airport, airfield area, I guess. Um, some properties that are still owned by us that will eventually transfer to Sterling in our master development relationship with them. Um, but so we have small revenue received on some old leases and then small expenditures related to those buildings. That's what you see in the fund for $52, $145,000 line item there. And then the big line item is the SCLA Debt Service Fund 455. That is where revenue from that comes through from VITA, from the uh, RDA dissolution process, is received and then paid out in the form of the nine different bond issuances that, issuance that we have for SCLA. As you can see there, we're projecting revenue um, of about $26.7 million for debt service, um, which does cover our annual debt service amount, but because of prior year defaults as far as principal and interest and reserve shortfalls from the years where we were not generating high tax increment, um, it still doesn't cover all of all of the shortfalls, but we're starting to chip away at that large balance that was there from 2011 or 2012, 2013, mm -hmm. So that's just a really High-level overview of the SCLA funds, and if you have any specific questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Yeah, I have a question. So, for clarification purposes, are these funds um, in consecutive order? So, in other words, 450 with our revenues, 452 for the expense, and so forth. So, 450 would have both revenues and expenditures. 450 means that the revenues and expenditures and those columns are specifically related to on airport operations. They involve running the airport, aviation type um, uses and facilities. The 452, which also has both revenue and expenditures, is going to be related to the properties that are more on the industrial side of the airport. Um, and then 455 will also have both the revenues and expenditures, but those are specifically related to the bonds and the debt service and revenues that are specifically pledged and specifically allocated to debt service. Good question. Yes. I, I, I understand your explanation about paying off the arrears. But this just shows uh, income under the under the, uh, to the service the debt twenty seven million one hundred six expenses twenty three six eighty uh, there's about two point six million three million where does it go yeah what fund so, does it go in who uh, holds it they they are that amount is projected to be transferred to the trustee for to be held with the trustee for um, December twenty Shouldn't there be an asterisk there saying that so that it, so that it balances? Um, part of it is too is um, so we have to replenish the reserves. So it's just a transfer of cash. It's not an actual expense. They it's don't. Cash. Yeah, there, it's not a cash transaction, so it doesn't it doesn't budget as an expenditure. But 100% of this 26 million that we're projecting, 26.7 million, will be paid towards um, towards debt. Because it transfers from an existing city account to a reserve account held with the trustee, um, it's not, it's basically like a transfer of funds. It's not expensed. Right. It's still not expensed. Mm -hmm. okay. We are 
very close to uh, having all of our careers repaid. Uh, I think we're going to be less than a million dollars at the end of next fiscal year, right, Christine? Yeah. Um, this June, we should be about $6.7 million. And then we have to replenish the reserves. And then the There's a reserve requirement in every one of those accounts, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many are in how many are in deficit position? Just two. Just two. The, um, 2007 and 2011. Okay, thanks. But anybody, I'm looking at three people here, but <laughs> <laughs> anybody recall exactly what the latest estimate is on when we'll be current, actually current on all of them? 1819. 1819. Fiscal year 1819 are the projections. Not the budget we're looking at now, okay. but next year's budget will be finally be making everything whole. Which is about a year ahead of the original projection, right? I remember 2020 being the original projection. So the uh, economy is improving, property values are improving more quickly than than the experts originally, seven or so years ago, uh, projected. So that's good news. Uh, is the paper parcel edge in Nevada derived from the master plan development, the master development plan? You know I know what you're talking about. Um, can you say the question again? So I understand. We have an agenda item tonight. It talks about parcel, paper parcel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vacation of a road. Yes. Right. So I want to know if that derived from that master development plan that you guys have with Sterling. Yes, yes. it is. And then um, you're talking about debts. I'm not aware of those. There's two left, one from 2007 and 2008. Maybe later on if someone can give you information on that. But in, in, in the book, um, all nine bond issuances, there's actually nine okay. that are still outstanding for SDLA. They're listed individually in the end. Some of the debt yeah. back here, yeah, the debt service tab. Debt service tab if you go there and then on the second page. So you'll see the, the, the ones from the RDA and then you'll, on the next page you'll see all of the listings that talked about the outstanding principal and what's due on an annual basis there. We can go through those and explain what we were talking about as far as the reserve funds being used and completed. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's all of the departments. John, do you have any wrap up comments, anything? Um, other than, uh, like Mr. Robertson said, uh, we can come back at the very next meeting um, with all the changes and things that you wanted in here um, and have a clean vote um, along with any requests um, that you're asking for, whether that be. You know, extra public safety or any of the other items that we were considering from the last workshop that you talked about. So um, we'll be able to wrap it up right before the end of the fiscal year, get it adopted so we can continue the operations from the state. So to give you an idea of some of the work we've done over the last two weeks, um, working with the departments, the rough estimate is um, we'll be back on the 6th with about 600000 in surplus revenue in the general fund. Um, and we'll be presenting options of uh, additional police officers, purchase of a fire truck, both of which are, are very much needed. Um, there are some capital items that we took out of the budget um, in order to free up some of that cash um, and instead give that option to the council if you wanted to pursue some of those items. Are you, are you talking about projected year in this year or uh, you know, for next year? Oh, okay. for next year. So this, the budget right now is essentially, that's in front of you, the book, is essentially balanced in the general fund. That's what I thought. Um, okay. So we've done a little bit of work over the last two weeks and we'll continue to work it on it over the next two weeks uh, and then get you an updated version. But that version, as of right now, and it's not fine, uh, it appears it's going to have in the neighborhood of 600,000 in surplus. Uh, so we're, right now, the things that we thought of, based on comments from the last meeting and anything that we hear today, uh, that we're going to present as options for the use of that any surplus money would be additional police officers, um, the purchase of the fire truck, potentially. Um, some capital items that we have taken out of the printed budget 
in order to give them to you as an option uh, rather than simply putting it in the buckets. Um, and then also, of course, replenishing reserves uh, is another, another good use of any surplus at this point in time. With that, we'll open it up. Any questions, comments, any other requests you'd like us to, to cost out for that June 6th meeting? Well, I'm, I don't, it's not related to that. But okay. The governor seems to be hinting that a, the income did not come in as projected, which I don't know what that means. They overprojected. It's higher than, they, I don't know what it means, but he's trying to hint that there may be a recession within the next year. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming a lot of things, but we we need state money and we need federal money and we need state grants. And I know two years ago when he didn't want to give any grants, he made this projection of short revenue when actually there was a positive mm -hmm. revenue. Uh, does anybody look at those projections from the state and make any guesses whatsoever? <laughs> Not to offend our dear governor, but the short answer to that is no, we don't use okay. his projections at all. We do our own. Um, and actually, the, right now, um, based on uh, working with finance staff and myself, I used to do this uh, every year, as you know, Mr. Cox, um, we are using a figure of, if I recall, it was about 5% for property tax increase for next year, either 4 or 5, um, because we continue to see increases in property values. Uh, if you look at home prices right now, they continue to go up. Uh, we see a pretty pretty healthy continuance of that. Uh, sales tax, we're actually budgeting flat. Um, our very last uh, meeting that we had with our sales tax consultants, um, it was pretty obvious that what where uh, sales taxes had been rising 2, 3, 4 percent on a quarterly basis, year over year quarterly, um, that did not occur in our last quarter that we had. Now we do have a meeting coming up next week with them. And we'll use that to be sort of the final gauge of where we think uh, sales tax is going to be and really where they think it's going to be. Um, they do a, a really great job of making those predictions based on probably 100 different economic factors. They do it for over 400 cities throughout the state as well as a lot of counties. So um, the one thing that, that we provide a lot of input in uh, into those numbers uh, when it comes time for budget is our, our new developments that are under construction at the south end of the city. Uh, there's a, a five unit uh, uh, building uh, that will have five different eating establishments in them, four of which are new. One is a Starbucks that we believe is likely to be one that's moved. Um, there's a standalone hamburger restaurant um, and then of course the Cracker Barrel. Um, we'll come up with some idea when those are going to be finished, talking with our building department. And then those sales tax experts that we've hired, they can look at, at other similar markets at the same store and give us a good estimate. Say they open in October, November, December. Here's how much additional sales tax we should expect from those things. Um, that's the biggest part of the input that we give them is kind of a prediction of, of when new shops are going to open that are going to be sales tax generators. So um, we'll have that number updated by, by the June 6th meeting as well. That meeting is in about a week. So. Now, the reduction in sales tax from 8% to 7.75, mm -hmm. did that have an impact on that? Not at all, no. That was actually the, a portion of the state's sales tax. Oh, okay. The city portion is 1%. So um, regardless of the state, that didn't change at all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I have a question. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. John Fidel. John, pleasure. John, what would be the approximate date that we would get a clean version? I'm hoping to give it to you guys a week prior to the June 6th meeting to give you guys a whole week to absorb the information and do your reviews and have any questions prepared for us at that time. Awesome. Thank you. Um, do you have a mention of your comments? I didn't grab them all, but I know that you started a discussion with what he had laid out. Doug, um, I want to know how would we tie in the law enforcement contract to be folded into all this? Mm -hmm. You might have touched a little so, bit, but. Yeah, so the contract that's on the, the open agenda tonight at 6 o'clock is on there because the county needs to plan for their, you know, their own fiscal year. So um, assuming that's approved by the council tonight, it would be approved contingent upon 
the approval of this or adoption of this budget at some point before June 30th, which we fully expect. Um, the additional uh, police officers that will be proposed and potentially acted out on, on June 6th, um, that would be a different contract. Um, that, and so we've asked from the Sheriff's Department for an updated Schedule A, it's called. That's the list of services that they're providing. Um, so that we can compare that to the one that's on the agenda tonight and give you an actual cost of should you want to add two uh, officers, this is what it would be. Um, as I recall from my email earlier this week, um, it was between four hundred and four hundred and fifty thousand dollars to add the two two new deputies. It was four thirty six, four thirty eight, somewhere in that range. So a little bit less than a quarter million uh, that I pulled off the top of my head two weeks ago but per per deputy. So it looks like it's more like two twenty or so. So that'll be some of the options that we're anticipating discussing on June sixth. Um, and then of course uh, the Sheriff's Department typically can act pretty quickly if we ask for additional deputies uh, because they have uh, deputies in either the county areas or in the jails who are ready for a different assignment and can be moved uh, if the contract city uh, is willing and able to hire additional. It was pretty quick. Question? Oh, sorry. Uh, go ahead. Uh, and then, Captain Schuller, maybe have you engaged in any discussions as to what personnel would be coming in if you have the potentiality of getting two new officers, code enforcement, and homelessness? Any idea? Question. Have you engaged in any discussions? What kind of personnel you'd be hiring when it comes to either the division of homelessness, code enforcement, deputies on the street covering beats? Any idea? Well, we'll, we'll get deputy sheriffs, and then when they're here, we'll decide where they're going to work. And um, <coughs> patrols are bread and butter. And if, if we see a need to put them um, to tackle the homeless problem, or whatever problem we see, we make that decision at that time. Go ahead, Jim. Are there any motorcycle deputies left? Uh, not any on-road motorcycle deputies in the desert that I'm aware of. I know Ranch Cucamonga has a couple, uh, maybe two or three. Uh, we do have some off-road motorcycles, but I don't think that's a full-time gig for any of them. I think that's just uh, the, the lucky ones that get to get that assignment on occasion. Just curious. You like motor cops. <laughs> I, I like to get through an intersection without having it totally blocked. Yeah. <laughs> and when they see a, a policeman on a motorcycle, they don't block the intersection. Maybe we can put a picture of one up or something. Yeah. I, don't know. Uh, I have not had a discussion with Captain Schuler or Captain Lucia uh, before he left here. Thank told me that, uh, a traffic officer in a police vehicle with four wheels can do everything that a motor officer can. Now, it doesn't have the same impact visually, I guess, as uh, as a motor does. I agree with you there. Yeah. Just curious. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, requests for us to study as far as costs? I don't have any questions. Well, I did, have, I did have one question. Mm -hmm. We, what the, the, the state has approved uh, huge billions of for transportation or transit. Mm -hmm. Do we know the number and his, that we would get? Is it assured or just a, some kind of a promise? And has that been included in the budget or are we going to wait until we get the check? Well, we're, we're waiting at this point okay. because I don't trust the state and I don't trust the legislative action that was taken. Okay. You know, uh, Assemblyman Jay Overnolte has asked a very pointed question of uh, the legal department of the state. I don't recall which one, but that is that uh, the state either has a section of the Constitution or a section of law uh, that says that it is illegal for the state to earmark funds for transportation projects and. Uh, if you recall from the adoption of that, there was two or three holdouts that uh, the folks that were pushing that bill needed, and they were able to negotiate tens of millions, if not a hundred million dollars, in projects within their own district in order for for them to uh, vote in favor of it. So, uh, on the face, at least, it would appear that Assemblyman Overnolte is has asked a very good question. So, 
we aren't budgeting anything. I have seen some estimates, um, but I don't recall what they were. I don't know if anybody else in the audience says 800,000, uh, as Mr. Messler has said, that would be additional gas tax funds um, that we could use on uh, street, street fares. Let's wait. Oh, yeah. <coughs> yeah, we, okay. we, don't, we don't budget things until we're pretty certain they're going to come. Yeah. Um, before you were going to respond to this question, you mentioned if there was any requests for studies, you didn't finish your sentence, or was well, sure what you, what you mean? Based on conversations two weeks ago, we know that there was a lot of interest in adding deputies. Uh, and then we also are aware, based on the, the fire proposal <coughs> that we received, and um, just based on maintenance activities, that we are in need of a new fire truck. Um, and then there was some, as I mentioned, there's some capital items that uh, we took out of the budget um, in order to present it more as an option rather than just simply the budget's balanced and we're going to replace a couple of roofs that maybe we can wait a year on. Uh, and then uh, putting money into reserves uh, is also highly recommended uh, in good times. Uh, I can tell you right now that if there is a recession, it would be very painful based on the level of our reserves in the general fund. We've been through that pain before, and I'd like to see us get to a point that we can start to replenish those reserves so that we can weather some of those storms. So beyond that, it was really just opening it up to the council if there's any other options you'd like us to study um, as far as the costs that we can present them on June 6th for a possible direction to put into the final budget, which we anticipate uh, coming to the council on June 20th for final adoption. So then you're asking council to... Any other wish list items? ...before June 6th comes about so that we can have that study by future so we can adopt something or two police officers looking at it? So, well, that's already happening. Okay. Um, but what, we, what I'm doing is just kind of throwing it out there. Is there something else other than police officers, fire truck, some capital items or reserves that you'd like us to present as, as other options um, that you could then direct us. Not asking for direction right now, just sort of a wish list of so anything that you didn't hear about in this budget that you'd like to see added if we can add it. Not to have that discussion and debate right now, but let us put it on the list so that we can have a healthy discussion about that in a couple of weeks. And what's the current reserve level that we have? Um, what is it, John? Or Christina, for three point oh, four, yeah. three point four is in reserves, and with the added um, SBCA that you guys had approved like almost a month ago, um, we took additional funding out of those general fund reserves to get those SCBAs for a fire. Those are the breathing apparatus that was like three hundred eighty-one thousand. That will take us at the end of the year a little over three million dollars, and so three million in reserves. And then there's also consideration too that the, Mr. Robinson had said at the previous budget workshop that he used retirement costs. They gave us a schedule in the next five years, and the 18-19 budget is about 1.2 million. Right. So right. just to take that into consideration too, that we go for okay. dependent on investments somewhat, but that's the projection right now. I would like to uh, see maybe a uh, list of the different types of fire trucks because I understand they're not just one price and mm -hmm. one type. Okay. So. Sure, sure, we can do that. Yeah. One's a medic engine, one's a brush engine, there's a ladder truck. Sure. Any oh, other questions? That's all I Then we move on to public comments. I don't have any cards. Is there anyone that would like to come up and speak? I don't see anyone. No. I move we adjourn. This meeting is adjourned till Tuesday, June 6, uh, 2017 at 3 p.m. for a workshop to discuss fire services. June what? Oh, I, 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 I,